Oh my god, hi, hello, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know where Saturdays are, Saturdays are when I do blah, 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 blah. Saturdays are when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Today, we're talking about a movie that has me deeply conflicted because I don't know if it's like a work of satirical masterpiece or just like not, not great. <laughs> but before we get into that, we gotta send it over to Admiral Kenny because I, I got more Squishmallows. Hold on, wait a second. It's a bubble tea. It's Bubbles the Bubble Tea. Bearthony, the big ass tie-dye bear. I think I named this one Randy the Rainbow Rabbit. This one doesn't have much structural integrity. I, I think they skipped out on the stuffing on this one. <laughs> but it's still so soft. I have a problem, and that's why you should watch this ad roll. <laughs> to enable my addiction. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Avril Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Ritual. Ritual takes the guesswork of figuring out where all your multivitamins are coming from and particularly whether or not they have a bunch of nasty additives and extra stuff that you simply do not need in your body. In your body. In your body. Not only are Ritual's vitamins vegan friendly, non-GMO, sugar free, gluten free, allergen free, it's all to freeze. The vitamins themselves are simple to take. They're just too easy to swallow tablets. They're not like, they're not super honkers sometimes for those of you that aren't great with taking pills. Um, They also have like a slight minty going on, which for me allows me to take them without uh, eating in the morning. But I can take these first thing in the morning so I know I won't forget them because that's usually when I do. And it doesn't upset my stomach and it's just like, ideal. They offer various kinds of multivitamins, by the way, men's multivitamins, 50 plus, prenatal, postnatal, teen vitamin. I'm using the uh, multivitamin for women, 18 plus. And it's only a dollar a day to get those essential nine nutrients that again, help supplement my everyday routine as well as my diet so that I know that I'm having, you know, having some extra security and making sure that I'm taking care of my health, you know. Go to ritual.com slash Kenny20 and use code Kenny20 to get 20% off your first month. Big thanks again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. So last week we talked about MGK's horrible uh, passion project called Good Morning with a bunch of people in it that Theoretically, how did you get their number? In said video's comments, y'all told me all the reasons why y'all don't like MGK and uh, if they are true. Yeah, I see why not. <laughs> also, people told me to give my hopes up on ever having sex with Pete Davidson because quote, he doesn't like black women because sure, that was the reason why I'm not having sex with Pete Davidson. I didn't know that, but I, I mean, I'm never surprised by any white man that's just like, oh, you know, I uh, am gonna be a dick and be anti-black. I'm not shocked by anyone doing that, but I also love it as if that I was the next in line. I was the rightful future ex-girlfriend of Pete Davidson. Now I've been wrongfully snubbed in my rightful place because of anti-blackness. <laughs> like, I don't know that n <laughs> like what? Trust and believe, moderately depressed tall man with good dick is very easy to find. They dime a dozen. Again, will you have penis? Sure, will you feel peace? Not so sure about that one. Anyway, uh, if you wanna check out that video, by the way, I'm rambling, <laughs> you can check that out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. So this week, we are looking at a terrible LGBTQ movie because it's June. It's Pride Month. Be who you are for your pride. And I asked people like, what is a terrible LGBTQ movie that I should watch? And one that people were bringing up a lot was this gem, I say semi-sarcastically, called GBF or a gay best friend, 2013 or 2014, depending on what release date you are basing it off of. And so I watched it and I have thoughts. <laughs> so GBF is a 2013 teenage rom-com about a gay boy who is outed at school, then is able to become the school's resident ornamental gay that the cool popular girls can use as their best friend to up their popularity status in order to get them into queen bee status truly and become prom queen. The movie is in many ways like a very uh, easy to digest gay spin on like mean girls. You know, it's very time appropriate, unfortunately, <laughs> of the 
early 2010s where, you know, mainstream society was getting their footing a bit on understanding more about LGBTQ community and what that means and how to uh, bring it into mainstream conversations. And, you know, along the way, some not great decisions were made. (laughs) In such a context, a movie like this makes sense in the sense that it's like taking things that are tried and true tropes, which is like the teen rom-com, the prom queen, the prom, the mean girls, the jocks, you know, all the stereotypes that you associate with just teen movies in general. Heathers, you think of She's All That, you think Mean Girls, you think any movie that has like popular kids and not popular kids and, and how, you know, shifting from not popular to popular changes your general like social status within high school as if it matters um i again i don't know if i'm sure i've said this before but there has never been a more inconsequential time for me than high school side note this is so off topic um my 10 year high school reunion is coming (laughs) up next year i ended up seeing some people that i went to high school with because somebody got married uh which is also terrifying whole thing i'm not gonna go into it uh people are having children and they're like and it's not weird that they're having children because they're 27 but anyway i was there And people were like, yeah, apparently there's like a lot of drama still brewing (laughs) from high school. And I was like, that's crazy. I don't remember much of high school. (laughs) Like I'd hate for that to be such a pivotal time in my life. Don't let it be, (laughs) please people. If this is you, if you're in high school right now, please don't allow this to be everything in your life. No matter what happens in high school, please heal so that this is the last you have to deal with this. That's just wild. What was I talking about? (laughs) But oh yeah, it's those stereotypical movies. Instead of really changing the foundation of that structure, it's still like a less than popular kid who's thrown into popularity. They just made it gay. It's like making Mean Girls, but making it about Damien alone, which honestly would have been a better movie. But despite this movie, you know, in many ways playing into very similar structures, you know, cringy parents, again, the popular kids, the not popular kids the jocks i didn't really know what to expect from this movie all i knew is i was scared because it's called gbf and i'm like oh boy depending on how you look at this movie it may or may not be a really bad idea (laughs) depending on how much you centralize the probably largely straight audience who will be watching this movie and i personally think you shouldn't (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because that was like, what? No, who cares? But there are certain movies that you can tell are made to help straight people understand gayness and gay people more so than it is to be like exemplary of life as a gay child and like a gay teen. And I don't, this movie de- This movie teeters on both a little bit, I think. (laughs) And of course, that's coming from someone who's straight. So maybe I'm giving too much credence to how it appeals to the straight gaze. (laughs) That was accidental. That's funny. Uh, But there is a lot about this movie that feels like straight's intro to the homosexual trademark. But depending on how you look at it, it could also be making fun of the sheer fact that that is even to some degree a necessity in in making mainstream media about a gay teen. So a satire, poking fun at the audience for being like the people that encompass this gay child and, and make his life difficult. So basically poking fun at structures of power. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. That is satire, largely. Obviously, the movie is meant to be satirical. I'm not confused. Like, it's a joke. (laughs) Like, it's supposed to be making fun of straight people, particularly how they treat gay men as this kind of, like, accessory akin to a purse or a new pair of shoes, and they expect them to behave. And these very Bravo-esque queer eye for the straight guy bitchiness, you know, they expect gay men to behave in this very superficial way. Um, in stereotypical way. And this movie does poke fun at that. I guess one of my concerns is that satire assumes that uh, the audience is smart. (laughs) It assumes that the audience gets the joke. And uh, my concern is that if the audience doesn't get the joke, it's just them like laughing at gay stereotypes. (laughs) The movie is directed by a openly gay man, Darren Stein. He also made Jawbreakers for those of you. I haven't seen Jawbreakers. I've heard of it. Maybe I should watch that. I don't know if it's good or bad. So being that he is a gay man, I'm sure that he's leaning more so towards the like 
making fun of straight people for doing dumb shit. And if you think about it in that regard, this movie has really funny moments. But that said, it is 2013. They don't handle race very well. I guess, again, depending on how you look at the movie and consider its impacts, you may or may not find this to be in regards to like LGBTQ visibility, genius or a giant setback <laughs> in that conversation. But regardless, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, so this is GBF 2013. So our main character is a teen boy named Tanner. He likes to be ignored. <laughs> unseen by the populace at school. He has a group of friends who are also kind of outcasts. There's a girl, and I thought she was the chick from Ned's Declassified, but they just have the same face apparently. There's an Asian dude named Glenn, if I'm not mistaken. Also his best friend, Brent, who is also closeted. And Brent is like, I'm ready to come out because no one else has come out at this school and I would be the first openly gay guy at this high school, which is such a novel concept. 2013, I was a high school senior and uh, there was plenty of out people. I'm sure that's not, necessarily everywhere though, but it's just an interesting thing to hear. Like no one is openly gay. <laughs> At my school, more, more often than not, kids felt more safe to be openly gay at school than they did at home. So they were usually just a lot more comfortable at school and people just kind of knew and it was like, oh, okay. But Brent wants to come out publicly at the school because he read in magazines that the newest great accessory is an ornamentary gay. <laughs> Hottest new thing for any queen bee to have apparently was a sassy gay friend to say bitchy things about how her ass looks in those jeans. Not to, not to bring race in, uh, uh, uh. but <laughs> there's also something very quintessentially white gay about this movie as well, which we could also consider limiting. I digress, I'm a straight, I can't, that's none of my business, y'all. I'm just saying I'm observing, like, Y'all can talk amongst yourselves. Anyway, and his theory is that if he comes out, he'll be automatically popular and he won't be like subdued to the sidelines and be like uncool forever. He can graduate with some notoriety essentially. He also believes that coming out will get him closer to the three queen bees of the school. Now there are three because there's different cliques that they each appeal to. There is Caprice, the black queen bee. Uh, she's the head of the theater nerds and the choir nerds, and she's incredibly talented. We have Schley, short for Ashley. I am not gonna call her that. She got me fucked up. <laughs> A queen bee because she's Mormon. <laughs> Apparently wherever they at, it matters. <laughs> she has like a quote unquote hot Mormon boyfriend as well, uh, who will be a subject of conversation later in the film. And then finally, Fawcett, who is popular in the very like quintessential, she's blonde and rich and she dated quarterback or, you know, you know, all that bullshit. I didn't even know who the quarterback was at our school. <laughs> like, I didn't know shit. I was like, who cares? And of course, this is in contrast with Tanner, who's just trying to get by. He's like, I don't want to be out. You have fun with that. Uh, I don't want to do that. I like to be invisible. But one day, Tanner's plans to say invisible come crashing down in a very 2013 series of events. One, he gets the new iPhone and people care. <laughs> Like Brent is like, you should download this app, a dating app, because it was 2013 and people didn't, and people were really going wild about dating apps. They were like, oh my God, what is this thing? You should download this app to see all the gay men in our area and you should like date one. Elsewhere, Jojo, yeah, I know, right? Get out, leave, Jojo. It's just a little too late, a little too wrong, and I can't wait, you know? All the right things to say, you know, it's just a little too late. Anyway, she was in this movie for some reason. She has a name in the movie, of course. Her name is Jojo. She is a student who is looking to make the school's gay straight alliance organization. But one problem is that there's no one gay, at least openly, at the school. So her brilliant idea is to download the gay dating app and see who has it downloaded on their phone at the school so that they can out them, so that they can come to the guy. That's bad, okay. Maybe allyship is not a great idea. <laughs> but the school day ends before they can get that plan in motion and Tanner and Brent hang out at Brent's house. His mom is Karen. Oh, Jack! 
Will and Grace obviously knows that her son is gay and she's supportive in her own clumsy, awkward, but well-intentioned way. Hey, you boys have any poppers? Popper would really hit the spot right about now. But yeah, they download the dating app and the next day, Tanner gets his phone taken at school. And then Jojo and her people go looking for whoever is in the school that has the app on it. Tanner now stands there as the only openly gay man, well boy, in the school. Speaking of, speaking of boy. <laughs> A brooding hot 25 year old teenagers. Y'all trying it. Oh yeah, we're like 17, girl, girl. <laughs> Girl, anyway, <laughs> that crow's feet, yeah. You're the secret gay. Wow. But you're not even that fabulous. Oh no. Tanner now designated the resident gay pet. Our very own homosexual. <laughs> and subsequent punching bag. Goes to Brent and is like, what the f because you downloaded this app onto my phone that I didn't even want. I'm now out it to everybody. You should at least out yourself too so that I'm not the only one getting all the attention and all the beatings. And he's like, no. He's like, I can't come out after you because then it looks like I'm just like, I'm a follower. Brent also says some really like not great. First of all, Brent is a terrible friend. <laughs> Let's start that off. He's a horrible friend through this entire movie. And we both know you love being the sidekick. Girl, okay. Tanner ends up calling Brent the F slur in front of his mom, effectively outing him officially to his mom. Not cool. Like even if she knew, like it was his thing. You know, and effectively that kind of ends their friendship. The next day, the three queen bees want Tanner's attention. Fawcett saves Tanner from the jocks, one of which is her ex-boyfriend, but she saves him from the bullies. And she's like, I want you to be my friend because I want a gay guy. And here comes the other two queen bees. And they're like, yeah, let's all hang out together. So it's like all three of them kind of vying for this prize possession. They all go out together. They grill him more so just seeing again, if he's like into a will and grace or a bravo gay guy and is surprised when he doesn't say things like fierce or fabulous and instead likes comic books. But they do decide to give a good old high school makeover montage, but this one, you know, just gay. <laughs> and when he comes back to school for once, the guy that nobody noticed, that nobody saw, who was able to just stand on the sidelines and was able to go unseen is now the center of attention. And Brent is jealous. Now, essentially overnight, Tanner is the most popular boy in school. So much so that he gets nominated for prom king basically immediately. Leaving the three popular girls fighting for the covetous prom queen title. Brent ends up being really crappy to, what is his name? Glenn and the girl that's not from Ned's Declassified. He ends up being really shitty to them as well, basically calling them a bunch of losers and like he's stuck with them because he can't get popular. And they're like, girl, f you and stop being <laughs> friends with them. Brent sucks, like he really does. Meanwhile, Tanner spends various times hanging out with each of the girls. He hangs out with Fawcett at her house and he finds out that she's not just popular, she also knows chemistry. What? He hangs out at Ashley's house with her Mormon boyfriend who has incredibly intense eye contact as he serves a meal of nothing but phallic meat objects. Um, and while at this house, there's just a bunch of very uncomfortable and very uh, boundary encroaching actions that everyone does. Ashley walks in on Tanner while he's peeing and hopes to ask him uh, various ways she can have non-penetrative sex with her boyfriend. Cause you know, God, what I'm peeing. And then later when he comes back out, she tells her boyfriend to drive him home because she forgot that she has a young Republicans meetings. And then we find out that the very anti-gay Mormon is secretly gay. Don't we love that trope? Like this trope isn't great. Some people are just bigots and they hate gay people. But that said, I have seen like some of the most staunchly anti-gay people end up being caught in a gay sex scandal. So obviously, this boyfriend falls into the ladder <laughs> and he's gross. Like seriously, like this scene made me so uncomfortable. I understand that they're trying to play this for laughs, but basically, uh, but anyway, the boyfriend is like, I want to f you. Not like a, would you, you would you, into, would you like to partake in sex? <laughs> like, like not at all. It was just like, I'm going to get married in a few years. So I got to 
right now. Just sit back and let me get this out of my system. Ew, f weird consent. Consent is a thing that you should ask for and give enthusiastically if you actually want to have the sex. Yeah. But like all jokes aside, I really hated the scene. It was visceral. One, the assault, but two, like his mouth. <laughs> like, and he, I will say the guy that plays him, oh, plays a hateable, punchable, I want to beat your ass character very well. It's something about the way his lips wrap around his teeth that make me want to knock them out. And this isn't the only scene Matt Gates over here is gonna be an asshole either, so. But when Tanner's hanging out with Caprice, Caprice says that she has uh, this dude that she knows that can take him to prom um, and they would be a cute gay couple because I found another gay. Now kiss. <laughs> Don't know if y'all like each other in any way other than, you know, you two's gay. Be who you are. <laughs> Finally, everyone goes to a party. All of the queen bees and Tanner end up at the same party. Tanner ends up meeting the dude that Capri Springs and they seem to get along relatively well. Ashley goes to the Asian dude, Glenn, and is like, I know you're gay cause you hang out with the other gay kid and he won't tell me like the magic gay tricks to sex. So we should have sex so that I can learn them and it won't count because you're gay. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot. There's just so much. Wow. Okay. One, if you think he's gay, very presumptuous to believe that he'd be interested in having sex with you. Two, also, did you ask? <laughs> Consent is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> also three, the Asian dude isn't even gay. <laughs> so he's like, sure, I'm so gay. Let's <laughs> and it's like, what is happening? The Mormon boyfriend ends up trying to find Tanner again, but he throws up on his shoes in front of his date, no less. That's embarrassing. Honestly, the least that could have happened to that bitch. I couldn't think of like a wittier thing to say. He's just a f head. <laughs> and the girlfriend too, f weirdo. All y'all are weird. After the vomiting, this seems to be Tanner's final straw and he decides to walk home drunk because he's over it. And outside of his door, was Brent, who was also drunk because he had been having a gay movie night with his mom. You know, halfway through Brokeback Mountain, he was like, I can't take this, I'm a drink, I'm a drink. They end up making up, sorta, like Brent still sucks, but they make up and they kiss and they fall asleep at Tanner's house. And Tanner wakes up like, oh my God, did we have sex? And it's like, no, we just fell asleep. And then his mom comes up. And so he makes Brent hide in the closet and then jump out the window. Um, afterwards so that he doesn't have to come out to his parents. Okay, back at school on Monday, Caprice tells Tanner that the guy that she wanted to hook him up with is still interested, even though he threw up in front of him. He was a little ew, but still. And so he signs up to go to prom with him and his date. But one of the Mormon girls, not the main Mormon, not the Queen Bee Mormon, but the other Mormons, not, not Ashley, not the Queen Mormon, but like Beta Mormon, whatever, she's like, Oh, I'm the head of the prom committee and I don't believe in gay people. So you can't bring <laughs> your significant other or your date. That's a man. Here comes GSA Jojo who's like, this is terrible. We should like be upset. This is the gay straight alliance, man. F this bitch. Tanner's like really upset that they wouldn't let him go to prom with a boy. And he's like, I'm gonna join the gay straight alliance. The queen bees are like, ew, that's a bunch of nerds. You're gonna go down in your social rank. Like, why would you do that? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm not just an accessory to dress up to stand beside you. I have like rights that are being encroached upon. <laughs> so Fawcett decides to join the Gay Straight Alliance to make it cooler. But this ends up becoming a fight between her and Jojo because Jojo's like, I have always cared for gay people. You're just here to get popular off of this or whatever. And one of the teachers is like, hey, I see y'all fighting over Tanner as if, again, he's an object. He's a, he's a, he's a person. <laughs> like, have you considered that you should treat him like a person? You know, this, this club is supposed to be about gay straight alliance, solidarity, LGBTQ issues and coming together and whatnot. But instead it just became like a tug of war over straight girls claiming the singular gay guy in the, <laughs> in the, in the meeting. And the teacher basically says as much. And then they set up this line, this sequence of jokes that, are such a whiplash because it made me, oh, oh, ah. I felt so many emotions <laughs> in this like cluster of jokes. I myself had a gay best friend once. He's no longer with us. Damn. 
What? Where'd he go? He off he died of the hiv, dumbass. Oh, God, no! He moved to San Diego with a leather queen. I meant myself and my cat, Anderson Cooper. I'm not proud of laughing at the Anderson Cooper. But I did laugh at Anderson Cooper. The GSA at the school decides to do a boycott prom and make their own prom that's inclusive of everybody. Ironically though, uh, Fawcett is like, if we want it to be cool, we gotta exclude the uggos. <laughs> we, can't, we can't have uggos at the prom, like what? Caprice ends up getting upset because apparently Fawcett told people that uh, Tanner is now endorsing her for prom queen, which is not true. Um, but it's in the paper, so sure. And that results in Caprice saying, fine, I'll just go with the homophobic prom, you know, so I can be prom queen over there. I don't know why she thought as a black woman, she would be the person they choose for prom queen considering it's based on traditionalism, <laughs> but okay. Brent sees that, you know, he's again up for prom king and Brent is like, well, you could have asked me to go to prom. And he was like, well, well this is awkward. I already have a date prom and he's like well yeah i know i was just saying like you could have asked me you don't have to ask me and then it's this awkwardness because they're kind of friends again but not really and he's like fine i'm gonna go to again homophobic prom for <laughs> the closeted gay dude and the black girl like yeah let's go to let's go to traditional values prom like but i know for a fact that my boo brent is as straight as they come like kanye or diddy or tyler perry also around this time, uh, Tanner ends up losing, again, those two random original friends of his. Because he keeps losing friends, Tanner ends up getting upset at Fawcett because again, she's being exclusive of boring nerds and fuggos. Stop excluding people from the inclusive prom. And they end up having like a conversation and she turns it into like a pity party about how she's not gonna win prom queen as if we're supposed to care. And apparently we are canonically, which is wild to me. You know, people like, Ashley because she's nice and they like Caprice because she's talented. What have I got? Yeah. But the bigot prom uh, gets in trouble for putting bigoted posters up. <laughs> um, and the secret gay Mormon is at it again. He ends up making out with uh, Brent and Brent is like confused, but kind of, that's dubious consent, you didn't ask. But luckily that prom gets canceled because of the hate speech all over they posted around the walls. No tossing salads. I got the cafeteria ladies coming in here asking me if I changed the menu. Okay, the salad thing was kind of funny. I'm not <laughs> Apparently, Ashley is really upset at a uh, boyfriend, Mormon creepy boyfriend for putting up these posters. So they end up breaking up after that. And he's very heartbroken about it, I'm sure. So now we're getting closer to prom day, uh, inclusive prom day, truly a visionary. We're allowing gay kids and ugly ones in the same room, who'd have thought? Brent and Caprice decide to do something like throwing glitter on uh, Tanner when he goes up to accept his speech. But before prom, Tanner finally comes out to his parents because he's gonna go with a guy date and they should know that. Okay, yeah, we know, we knew, it's, it's fine, we don't care. Also, isn't that the father from Andover? That's the Andover guy. Yikes, he, he knows how to pick him, don't he? <laughs> I have a video on that, watch it. It's a terrible movie. Anyway, but yeah, it's time for prom. Everyone ends up going for one reason or another, whether it was to be with a date or to protest outside. Tanner and his prom date end up separating because the prom date seems to really wanna go beyond a certain point that he's comfortable with sexually. And basically he's just like, you're not ready, peace. And he ends up hooking up with the Mormon guy, <laughs> I guess. At least he's consenting, but uh. but finally Tanner goes up, goes full Lindsay Lohan and gives his whole like, please stop treating me like an object. I am not a status symbol. I am a human being. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and for some reason at the end of this conversation, just to like sum it all up, sew up all of the loose ends, I guess. He's just like, I wanna be Brent's sidekick again. Brent ends up falling in the glitter so that it doesn't hit Tanner. They make up. They contemplate whether or not they would like to start a romantic relationship, but they realize they don't wanna see a situation in which they could break up and not be friends anymore. They wanna stay friends forever. And that's the end of the movie. So that's all. I don't know how I feel about this movie. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it, it's just like a campy satirical movie making fun of straight people and how they commodify gay men, particularly straight women tend to commodify, I know words. That kind of depends on the on the viewer to get the joke. And if they don't, it's just laughing at gay stereotypes. So 
it's film. Like it is funny at certain points. Some parts didn't age very well at all. I think it, it was an attempt of its time period. And I think it makes sense in that time period. Uh, yeah. But being that it is Pride Month, I wanted to encourage everybody to donate to maybe some of your local LGBTQ support charities. I can't think of words right now. Um, I'm researching right now. I'll pop up whoever I'm gonna donate to, probably three or so people. Cause you know, let's get the ball rolling. Because yeah, we can like talk about crappy, like fun-ish movies like this, but also like people are in danger. <laughs> like, like all jokes aside, like people are in danger and you guys maybe would like actually please donate. <laughs> That's all, folks. If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. And I will see you guys next time.